Buenas noches. Good evening. So um, we are now in a new sermon series, and I hope that, again, this is the type of sermon series that we don't want to talk too much. We want to take action, uh, because at the end of the day, we can read 300 books on evangelism or preach 300 sermons, but at the end of the day, we need to open our mouth and share the gospel, right? So my hope is that we, uh, through this sermon series, we are empowered to do that and share Christ, share Christ with others. So today we're going to reflect on Matthew 28, 19 and 20, and let's start diving into this powerful sermon series on evangelism. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is not merely a suggestion. It's a commandment. So this is what people, what theologians call the Great Commission. And the church for 2,000 years uh, has been uh, preaching and teaching about the Great Commission. But sometimes, because of many reasons that I'm going to share in a few minutes, we think that it is the great suggestion. <laughs> but it's not a suggestion. This is a commandment. And God wants us to uh, really embrace this calling and this commandment to go and make disciples of all nations. So the purpose of the sermon series is to teach what the Bible says about evangelism uh, and how to reach non-believers, but also to equip you to start sharing your faith and also to offer some strategies so you can get started if you are doing it. My hope is that you go even deeper and go further. To offer also instilling you an excitement for the Great Commission. Just get excited about it. That you get on fire for it. And then encourage us to take opportunities, to asking the Holy Spirit to open our hearts to seek for opportunities to share the gospel. So first, let's define what evangelism is. And there is three key words in Greek. One is eungelion, which means good news. And the reason I want to share this is because first, if we know what evangelism is, we're not going to get confused with so many bad practices that we have seen in the church for 2,000 years uh, about how to present the gospel. And my big concern is that there is a heavy focus on the afterlife for evangelism when God wants to impact your life right here, right now. So we're not going to dismiss that there is a heaven. We're not going to dismiss that there is a hell. But we're not going to use fear, right? to preach the gospel. And, the, and yes, you still have to share those realities, but we know that there is more, and there is more in the good news beyond, the, beyond death. So then you have the second word, eungalizo, which means to announce. And God says, you know, I send you, you are ambassadors, share the gospel, so we have to announce. In uh, uh, Revelation 14, 6, you see the announcements of the gospel. And then the last word is evangelistes, which means one who announced the gospel, the good news. And when the church really embraces the good news, the church begins to experience growth because no one can preach the gospel without the Holy Spirit. This is something that if you really want the Holy Spirit in your life, how many of you need and want and have a hunger for the Holy Spirit in your life? There are some things that you do and suddenly he show up. You don't have even to pray. He shows up. If you start talking about Christ and sharing Christ, he shows up. You start talking about the, 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 the cross and, and how God became flesh and died for, for you and for me on the cross, he shows up. If you start sharing the gospel with people and you begin to explain how the gospel impacted the world, he shows up every time we talk about Christ because we were not there 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit will show up and open people's mind and heart to hear. The issue that we have right now in the church is that instead of preaching the gospel 
and we just did this proclamation of the Apostle Creed, instead of preaching the gospel, we are, we are just playing games and talking about three steps to be happy, five steps to fix your marriage, two steps to cha-cha-cha. I mean, it looks like, right? Instead of preaching the gospel. I believe with all my heart that if the Holy Spirit is in your life and the word of God is in your life and you are committed to Jesus, everything else will fall into place. How many of you believe that? So for me, it's more about how to equip the church so you think and follow the Spirit on your own and develop a life of discipleship where you are growing daily and impacting every area of your life with the revelation and the understanding that the Holy Spirit provides for you and then we, pastors and people who are side by side with you, will hold you accountable to it, asking you questions. How are you doing? Are you following Christ? What do you need? Can, how can I pray for you? How can I fast for you? That, that's when we start seeing the power of God. Now, why we need to do evangelism? There is a, a powerful uh, organization called Disciples for All Nations, and in their website, they do a lot of research around the world. They call the window, the 1040 window, where you have so many people who are on rich, on rich people groups and all of that. And one of the, of the statistics there is that we have around 66,000 people who die daily without Christ. Again, 66,000 people who die daily without Christ daily. So to put that into perspective, if you, I, I love to travel, so there is a big plane called Boeing 747. It holds 500 people in it. Imagine that you turn on your TV and you see 80 planes, Boeing so 747, falling from the sky, people dying. How many of you would be alarmed if you see 80 Boeing 747 falling from the sky at once on the news every day. This is why my hope is that at the minimum we have awareness, at the minimum we lose the apathy of going through life without sharing Christ with other people. That you, have a, that you leave this place with a burden for the gospel, for the gospel. So, but I also know that we have many challenges, and the idea is to preach the gospel and pray for people and remove these obstacles. I'm going to give you only five, but I know for a fact that you have your own. But this is the most, the most common five um, reasons why people don't do it. Number one is fear of rejection. People don't want to be rejected. People don't want to offend other people, Right? But when you have this fear, what the Bible says about fear, that if you spend time with the Holy Spirit, the perfect love of God will take out and push away your fear and deliver you from fear. So see your love for God, you overcome your fears. Lack of knowledge or confidence. Some people don't know how to start, how to share the gospel. They don't have the confidence. Well, you pray for confidence. You, fr you pray for the, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Once you set your heart and your mind on this powerful, great commission, then you begin to pray, God, remove any fear in me. Remove this lack of confidence. Give me the knowledge to share your gospel to the world. Apathy, that one of the big ones. People are so worried about their own life. They're going through so many things that they don't think about anything else. Everything is about me because you are surviving. And the gospel says that Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly, which means that we, sh we should not be surviving. We should be living and not only living, but living abundantly. Cultural resistance. You have people and you have nations and so many religions, so many things happening. And people say, well, you know, I don't feel comfortable uh, pushing down my religion to other people. You're not pushing anything. You're just sharing the gospel and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. You share the gospel. If you don't know this, the gospel and Jesus came uh, 2,000 years ago in, a, in the same context we are in now. So the, the apostles were preaching the gospel in the same context we have now. So many religions, so many people with so many ways of reaching God and reaching heaven. That's not new. So imagine the 12 apostles saying, in the name of tolerance, 
I'm not going to preach the gospel because I'm going to respect your religion. We will not be here. They went around preaching the gospel, knowing that they have the truth because they saw Jesus crucified. They saw Jesus coming back from the dead. They saw Jesus after the resurrection. There was no compromise. This is the truth. We're going to preach it. And that's what today we have all these fruits of the churches. We are disciples. We are a fruit. We are the harvest of this powerful gospel. And I said that to you uh, when I came, I came to Christ in Cuba, and the church where I came to Christ in Cuba was planted by a missionary. His name was Peter Knox. So he went to Cuba and, and, and planted this church, and now you have a Cuban in your church. So, and that happened like 200 years ago. So if you don't like it, blame him, okay? Because I am, the, I am your harvest, I am your harvest. So God sends missionary around the world, including Cuba, and here I am, 200 years later, preaching to you. Wow. The power of the gospel, the power of preaching the gospel, the power of sharing the gospel with other people. Now, why we should share the gospel? Number, number one, because it's not a suggestion. God is commanding us to preach the gospel. Some of you say, well, I don't have the gift of evangelism. There's no gift. What is it? A commandment. Of course, you know, some people are very on fire and some people are excited about it. And the Bible also refers to that, that people, some people are uh, uniquely equipped. And they, like Billy Graham and all these people. But you don't need to be Billy Graham. The Bible says that when you receive the word of God, that's what Jesus teach in Matthew 4 and in Mark 4, if you have a good heart, if your heart is good seed, you're going to produce a crop that is 30, 60, and 100 by one. So in your life, in your, in your life, you should be counting how many people, how many fruits are you producing, how many people are coming to Christ through you. And Stephen asked, okay, look around, see how many people are here and pray for them. There is another question connected to that. Look around and tell me how many people who are here came to Christ because of you. How many people here are baptized or are deciding to be baptized or are joining the church because of you? How many people here are changing their life and walking away from sin and, and, and brokenness and all of that because of you? If you say none, that's a problem. Oh, last time, 1980, that's a problem. Because this is an everyday challenge. Because you love people. Because you love your family. Because you love your neighbor. Out of love, we preach the gospel. It is an honor to preach the gospel. It's, it's part of who we are. Our culture is hopeless without the gospel. If you know that, then you become an ambassador for Christ. And you go out and you preach the gospel. You have no fear. Because you are believing. You believe with all your heart that God sent you to preach the gospel. Now, in order to do it and do it effectively, based on Mark 4:20, I already mentioned that John 14:6 and Acts 1:8. If you put this together, there are some prerequisites for you to be effective on preaching the gospel. Mark 4:20 talks about the heart. If you have a good soil heart, you're going to produce a crop. You're going to produce fruit, 30, 60, and 100. So I challenge you. I don't care if you are 80 or 60 or 70. Just decide. I'm going to produce, I'm going to aim to my first harvest, 30 people for Christ before I die. If you already are beyond 30, like you are Billy Graham, go to 60. But we have goals for everything. How many of you have goals for your house, for your business, for your, for your family? You have goals, goals, goals. Do you have, a, do you have goals for the kingdom about preaching the gospel to people and allowing the Holy Spirit to use you? Now, you're not responsible for convincing people. You are responsible for sharing the gospel. And sometimes in the church, instead of rewarding obedience, we, re we reward numbers. What does that mean? I send Jeff, he's very excited, very energetic, and he brings 20 people. And then I send another person that's not as energetic and brings one. What we do? We clap and say, Jeff, you are awesome. What awesome evangelist you are. Boom, 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 you. 
Then the other person that also went out, knock on doors, talk to people, talk to their families, no one came to Christ, go like this. And we create a culture where we clap for numbers instead of clapping for obedience. Because at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit who convinces people of sin and with the Holy Spirit who brings people to Christ and from Christ to the Father. Not Jeff, not the other person, not me. Our job is to present the gospel and then leave it there. That's it. If you commit to that, God will show up and show up. Now, we need good soul hearts. We need the revelation that Jesus is the way in the life. That's what John 14 says. You have to have that revelation. No doubt. Do you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross? Do you believe that he said, I am the way and I am the life? There is no life without me. That's a powerful statement. No one come to the Father except through me. That's a very powerful statement. Do you believe it? And if you believe it, then you have to share it because then there is no life outside of Jesus. And every time you see sin, you see death, therefore the only way to bring people out of death is giving you life, giving them life through Jesus. If that is true, you cannot sleep at night if you're not preaching the gospel, if you're not sharing with other people. This is not for the pastor or for people who are paid. This is for everyone, everyone. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit. We see in Acts 1, 8, that God show up and said, you are my disciples. Go and preach the gospel. Go and to the end of the earth, receive power, receive the Holy Spirit, and then you will be my witness. In other words, the Holy Spirit show up in 1, 8. Jesus, in Matthew 28, sent them, and they were like, freeze, okay, I need to go, I need to go. Jesus went to the cross, he died, and everybody was freeze. No one did anything. Jesus sent them and then says, wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit show up. After the Holy Spirit show up, it was so easy to share the gospel. So in other words, without the Holy Spirit, impossible. All these fears, all this lack of confidence, all of that come from what? For, from not spending time with God. And if you start spending time with God and ask him, empower me to obey the great commission. I believe that Jesus died for me and for us, others in the, on the cross. Help me, Holy Spirit, and you go around your day, something will happen. He will help you to be a witness, someone who can testify that Jesus is real, that Jesus is God, that he died on the cross. So when we see Matthew 28, the first is the command. Jesus calls every believer to make what? Disciples. To make what? There is a big difference between a disciple and a believer. A believer comes to church, sit down, next Sunday, check. Next Sunday, check. A disciple is one that goes around. That, that the word disciple is the word matetes in Greek. Someone who is like his master. Someone who is like his teacher. That person will live out what he received he put it into practice and therefore when you see this command go it's an imperative in Greek it's go as you go you do and what does that mean I mean that when I go to to the bank to deposit my check I'm not going to the bank to deposit my check I am full of the spirit I'm looking for opportunity I'm a disciple and as I do that then I go to the bank if you go to the groceries, same thing. You go to the store for groceries, same thing. You are going in mission, and while you do that, then you go to the gas station, then you go to the groceries. That's a whole different mindset. You're looking for opportunity to share the gospel. You're looking around, you're praying, who is sensible, who is open. It's not for everybody. If you see people like this, they want to kill you, don't say anything. But some people, just without you asking, they start talking to you. And they, and they tear up, and they share their life, and you didn't ask anything of their business, but they don't know how they cannot resist to share with you their business. Do you know what I'm talking about? And, when, and that's a, for me, it's a sign that God is giving you a cue. Come on, talk about Jesus. You are not Dr. Phil. How is that working for you? No. You need to bring the gospel in it, into the conversation. That's the challenge. 
We are not psychologists. We need to preach the gospel and share the gospel. So then we apply this. We need to recognize that we have a, a role in spreading the gospel. Guys, it feels so good not to have another service after this. My goodness, I can relax. I'm not in a hurry. So buckle up because if we're waiting for Iron Man, this is what it is. It's Iron Man right here. Okay? That's good. <laughs> so two, the scope, right? This is not for the Cubans. This is not for the Africans. This is not for the Europeans. This is for whom? Everybody. No one is excluded. Let's preach the gospel to everyone in every language. Now, pastor, how can I preach the gospel to the Africans? I don't know the language. You don't need to know the language. You need an African. Pray, God, give me a friend. Give me an African friend. How many? One. And once you have one, you start investing in that person, and that person who knows the language, knows, knows, the, knows the language, knows the culture, he will go and share the gospel with their family. And guess what? Kabunga. Now you have 10, 15, 20 people talking about it in Africa. That's the way it is. You don't need 300 people. How many do you need? One. Because that's what the gospel says in Mark, that if you have a good heart, you will produce a crop of 30. 60 in a hundred. Wow. Powerful. Just one person. Just ask, God, give me one friend. Give me one of my family members. Just one. 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 So we need to embrace that it is a multicultural evangelism. And God is so good that today in America, you don't need to go to Africa to preach the gospel to the Africans. You don't need to go to Latin America to produce the gospel and preach the gospel to the Latino people, they are here. God brought them here. Easy job. You don't have to take a plane. Just go out. Even the Chinese are here. Go to the panda. How many of you like Chinese food? <laughs> okay. That's why I'm, I'm working on my pulpits. Do this. You know, I'm putting for 20 years working on my pulpit so I can put my Bible here and preach here. <laughs> okay. This is, this is you, you can go and find them where they are and just share the gospel with them. And they, in turn, fueled by the Spirit, will do the same thing. The last piece of this powerful message of Matthew 28 is the assurance. Jesus promised his presence with us. What does that, what does that mean, Pastor? What does that mean? It means that you are not going alone to preach the gospel. Who's going with you? Jesus himself. How many of you that if Jesus is going with you, everything will be fine? Amen? It's like having a powerful person by your side. You're not, you're not afraid. You go to places because you know that anything happens, this person is going to show up and help you. So if you know that Jesus is with us, that's the assurance. I will be with you. I will be with you. So don't be, don't anything. If a person is sick, trust in Jesus, in his presence. He said, a person is sick, pray for that person. You don't need to heal the person. You know who does the healing? The Holy Spirit does the healing. You're not, in the, you're not in the business of healing people. You're in the business of praying for people and allowing the Holy Spirit to heal them. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. If he does, hallelujah. If he doesn't, talk to him. But my job is to pray for you. That's it. We have no control. Of what, of what, on what God wants to do. He's not my, he's not a, my slave. God has his own mind, his own power, his own purpose. So the only thing I can do is just align with him and create the space on earth for him to move. After that, I'm not responsible. I'm responsible for opening my mouth. I'm responsible for praying for people. I'm responsible for sharing Jesus and loving people. That's it. Then step back and let the Holy Spirit work. Let the Holy Spirit work. So this is the call to action. Pray for five people you want to see. Save. Five people in your family, in your neighbor. Do you know how many churches we have planted with this little sermon? Many, 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 many churches. And what we used to do is we ask everyone, write five names. Write down five names. Then for a week, you're going to pray for that, for those names, without saying anything to anyone or to the person. You just pray. The second week, you start fasting 
for these people. In the third week, you keep praying and fasting for these people. And then by the third week, in, the, in week number four, what you're going to do is you're going to call them and just have a conversation with them and see if the Holy Spirit is already moving. If the Holy Spirit is already moving, how do you know that? Because the person will begin to ask you spiritual questions or sharing their life with you. That's a, that's a cue that the Holy Spirit wants to say if he's ready and the harvest, the person is harvest ready because they get interested for spiritual things. Then you know. And then you share the gospel if you do that and then boom, you have a harvest. Little by little, you start doing that now and God will do the rest. So let's, can you raise and put in your face and ask the band worship I really want to ask you that you worship and ask, invite the Holy Spirit to remove any fear, any obstacles that you might have. And start thinking of people in your family, your co-workers' names, and begin to present those names before the Lord and ask God for an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Let's worship, and as we do that, God will speak to us, to our hearts. God bless you. We're going to end tonight in a little up tip away. The song is called Child of Love. It's a reminder, just as Pastor Yosmar said, we're all children of love, but sometimes people just need to know that the love is there. Sing along together. I was walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. And I was chasing the
We're not done. Yes. It's something that a lot of response oral. When I sing, everybody, praise the Lord, you sing it back. Here we go. Everybody, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. You say, everybody, praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for what he's gonna Woo! do in us and on the heavens above. Yeah. I thank the Lord for the smile that he put on my face. I thank the Lord for his grace. I thank the Lord for what he's gonna do to me. Cause I know that I am really set free. no doubt that the Holy Spirit is here. If you don't know this, Kyle has been sick, so I don't know what is going on, but the Holy Spirit really showed up because he was like, I couldn't move, I couldn't. and now he's like, everybody, everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you. Go in peace. Go and preach the gospel to the nation. Go forth with the Lord's blessing, carrying the light of the gospel to all corners of the world. Go in the
the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord.